Hey everyone, Mr. D here, and I will be concluding this amazing book for us. I want to thank all of our wonderful teachers who came and read, all of our students who have enjoyed this book and read at home and at school, and all of our families who have participated. Thank you, this is amazing. And remember, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. I will be reading page 302. The chapter is Awards. I liked Mr. Tushman's speech, but I have to admit, I kind of zoned out a little during some of the other speeches. I tuned in again as Miss Rubin started reading off the names of the kids who'd made the high honor roll because we were supposed to stand up when our names were called. So I waited and listened for my name and she went down the list alphabetically. Reed Kingsley, Maya Markowitz, August Pullman. I stood up. When, then, when she finished reading off the name, she asked us all to face the audience and take a bow and everyone applauded. I had no idea where in that huge crowd my parents might be sitting. All I could see were the flashes of light from people taking photos and parents waving at their kids. I pictured mom waving at me from somewhere even though I couldn't see her. Mr. Tushman came back to the podium to present the medals for academic excellence. And Jack was right. Zamina Chin won the gold medal for overall academic excellence in the fifth grade. Charlotte won the silver. Charlotte also won a gold medal for music. Amos won the medal for overall excellence in sports, which I was really happy about because ever since the nature retreat, I considered Amos to be like one of my best friends in the school. But I was really, really thrilled when Mr. Tushman came out, called out Summer's name for the gold medal in creative writing. I saw Summer put her hand over her mouth when her name was called. And when she walked up onto the stage, I yelled, Woohoo, Summer, as loudly as I could, though I don't think she heard me. After the last name was called, all the kids who just won awards stood next to each other on stage, and Mr. Tushman said to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to present to you this year's Beecher Prep School Scholastic Achievers. Congratulations to all of you. I applauded as the kids on stage bowed. I was so happy for summer. The final award this morning, said Mr. Tushman, after the kids on stage had returned to their seats, is the Henry Ward Beecher Medal to honor students who have been notable or exemplary in certain areas throughout the school year. Typically, this medal has been our way of acknowledging volunteerism or service to school. I immediately figured Charlotte would get this medal because she organized the coat drive this year, so I kind of zoned out a bit again. I looked at my watch, 10.56. I was getting hungry for lunch already. Henry Beecher was, of course, the 19th century abolitionist, the fiery sermonizer for human rights, after whom the school was named, Mr. Tushman was saying when I started paying attention again. While reading up on his life in preparation for this award, I came upon a passage that he wrote that seems particularly consistent with the themes I touched on earlier. Themes I've been ruminating upon all year long. Not just the nature of kindness, but the nature of one's kindness. The power of one's friendship. The test of one's character. The strength of one's courage. And here, the weirdest thing happened. Mr. Tushman's voice cracked a bit, like he got all choked up. He actually cleared his throat and took a big sip of water. I started paying attention, for real now, to what he was saying. The strength of one's courage, he repeated quietly nodding and smiling. He held up his right hand like he was counting off. Courage, kindness, friendship, character. These are the qualities that define us as human beings and propel us on occasions to greatness. And this is what Henry Ward Beecher Medal is about, recognizing greatness. But how do we do that? 
How do we measure something like greatness? Again, there's no yardstick for that kind of thing. How do we even define it? Well, Beecher actually had an answer for that. He put his recent reading glasses on again, leafed through a book, and started to read. Greatness, wrote Beecher, lies not in being strong, but in the right using of strength. He is the greatest whose strength carries up the most hearts. And again, out of the blue, he got all choked up. He put his two index fingers over his mouth for a second before continuing. He is the greatest, he finally continued, whose strength carries up the most hearts by the attraction of his own. Without further, further ado, this year I am very proud to award the Henry Ward Beecher Medal to the student whose quiet strength has carried up the most hearts. So will August Pullman please come up here to receive this award. Our next chapter will be floating. People started applauding before Mr. Tushman's words actually registered in my brain. I heard Maya, who was next to me, give a little happy scream when she heard my name, and Miles, who was on the other side of me, patted my back. Stand up, get up, said kids all around me, and I felt lots of hands pushing me onward onto the stage, guiding me to the edge of the row, patting my back, high-fiving me. Way to go, Augie! Nice going, Augie! I even started hearing my name being chanted, Augie, Augie, Augie. I looked back and saw Jack leading the chant. First in the air, smiling and signaling for me to keep going, and Amos shouting through his hands, Woohoo, little dude! Then I saw Summer smiling as I walked past her row, and then she saw me look at her. She gave me a secret little thumbs up and mouthed a silent, cool beans to me. I laughed and shook my head like I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. I think I was smiling. Maybe I was beaming. I don't know. As I walked up the aisle toward the stage, all I saw was a blur of happy, bright faces looking at me and hands clapping for me. And I heard people yelling things out at me. You deserve it, Augie. Good for you, Augie. I saw all the teachers in the aisle seats. Mr. Brown and Miss Potosa and Mr. Rochi and Miss Antonabi and Nurse Molly and all the others, and they were cheering for me, woohooing and whistling, whistling. I felt like I was floating. It was so weird, like the sun was shining full force on my face and the wind was blowing. As I got closer to the stage, I saw Miss Rubin waving at me in the front row. And then next to her was Mrs. G, who was crying hysterically, a happy crying, smiling and clapping the whole time. And I, as I walked up the steps to the stage, the most amazing thing happened. Everyone started standing up. Not just the front row. Oops, the lights went out. Wave them back on. I'll do that part again. Not just the front row, but the whole audience silently, suddenly got up on their feet. Whooping, hollering, clapping like crazy. It was a standing ovation for me. I walked across the stage to Mr. Tushman, who shook my hand with both his hands and whispered in my ear, well done, Augie. Then he placed the gold medal over my head, just like they do in the Olympics, and had me turn to the face of the audience. It felt like I was watching myself in a movie, almost like I was someone else. It was like that last scene in Star Wars, A New Hope, when Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Chewbacca are being applauded for destroying the Death Star. I could almost hear the Death, the Star Wars theme music playing in my head as I stood on stage. I wasn't even sure why I was getting the medal, really. No, that's not true. I knew why. It's like people you see sometimes, and you can't imagine what it would be like to be that person, whether it's somebody in a wheelchair or somebody who can't talk. Only I know that I'm that person to other people. Maybe to every single person in that whole auditorium. To me, though, I'm just me, an ordinary kid. But hey, if they want to give me a medal for being me, that's okay. I'll take it. 
I didn't destroy a Death Star or anything like that, but I did just get through the fifth grade. And that's not easy, even if you're not me. Pictures. Afterward, there was a reception for the fifth and sixth graders under a huge white tent in the back of the school. All the kids found their parents and I didn't mind at all when mom and dad hugged me like crazy or when Via wrapped her arms around me and swung me left and right about 20 times. When Papa and Tata hugged me, when Aunt Kate and Uncle Poe and Uncle Ben, everyone kind of teary-eyed and wet-cheeked. But Miranda was the funniest. She was crying more than anyone and squeezed me so tight that Via had to practically pry her off of me, which made them both laugh. Everyone started taking pictures of me and pulling out their flips, and then Dad got me, Summer and Jack, together for a group shot. We put our arms around each other's, each other's shoulders, and for the first time I can remember, I wasn't even thinking about my face. I was just smiling, a big, fat, happy smile for all the different cameras clicking away at me. Flash, flash, click, click. Smiling away as Jack's parents and Summer's mom started clicking. When Reed and Maya came over, flash, flash, click, click. And when Charlotte came over and asked if she could take a picture with us, and we were like, sure, of course. And then Charlotte's parents were snapping away at our little group along with everyone else's parents. And the next thing I knew, the two Maxes had come over, and Henry and Miles and Savannah. Then, Am then Amos came over. And we were all in this big, tight huddle as parents clicked away, like we were on the red carpet somewhere. Luca, Isaiah, Nino, Pablo, Tristan, Ellie, I lost track of who else came over. And everybody, practically. All I knew for sure is that we were all laughing and squeezing and tight against each other, and no one seemed to care if it was my face that was next to theirs or not. In fact, and I don't mean to brag here, but it kind of felt like everyone wanted to be close to me. The Walk Home, which is the final chapter. We walked to our house for cake and ice cream after the reception. Jack and his parents and his little brother, Jamie. Summer and her mother. Uncle Poe and Aunt Kay, Uncle Ben, Tata, and Papa. Justin and Via and Miranda, mom and dad. It was one of those great June days when the sky is completely blue and the sun is shining, but it's so hot that you wish you were on the beach instead. It was just the perfect day. Everyone was happy. It felt like I was floating, the Star Wars hero music in my head. I walked with Summer and Jack and we couldn't stop cracking up. Everything made us laugh. We were in that giggly kind of mood where all someone had to do is look at you and start laughing. I heard dad's voice up ahead and looked up. He was telling everyone a funny story as they walked down Ames Fort Avenue. The grown-ups were all laughing too. It was like mom always said, dad could be a comedian. I noticed mom wasn't walking with the group of grown-ups, so I looked behind me. She was hanging back a bit, smiling to herself like she was thinking something sweet. She seemed happy. I took a few steps back and surprised her by hugging her as she walked. Then she put her arm around me and gave me a squeeze. Thank you for making me go to school, I said quietly. She hugged me close and leaned down and kissed the top of my head. Thank you, Augie, she answered softly. For what? For everything you've given us, she said. For coming into our lives. For being you. She bent down and whispered in my ear, You really are a wonder, Augie. You are a wonder. <laughs>